I'm at the uh, NVIDIA booth with Bill and we're going to take a look at what we can expect from NVIDIA in the uh, upcoming months. So, what can we expect from NVIDIA on uh, the desktop side, in, in big lines? So um, within desktop space, we've got uh, you know we've begun shipping GeForce GTX 680, followed by 670, followed by GTX 690 for people with really big budgets and want the ultimate in gaming. Um, and you know the they really are defining the high end of video gaming on any kind of platform, mm -hmm. right? You know here at E3. Um, you know, all of the big, big demos that you're seeing this year are not on console. Everybody's next gen yeah. uh, hardware, you know, the, the next gen hardware, frankly, is GeForce GTX on the PC side. Um, we've also um, introduced the new GeForce um, uh, GT640, mm -hmm. um, which is our more mainstream, very affordable graphics card, um, still with the, um, you know, still with the Kepler uh, GeForce architecture available. So you get all of the fantastic tessellation, you get the great performance per watt, um, you get a PC that doesn't require 1,000 watt, 700 watt yeah. power supplies anymore. Um, but the most important thing is the entire Kepler architecture is designed with mobile in mind. Mm -hmm. All right. So the other big thing that's going on right now is this week was Computex over in Taiwan, where many of our OEM partners introduced um, three pound ish mm -hmm. um, ultra books that can play games like Battlefield 3 with all of the settings turned up. And motion, I think, yeah. yeah, and and to have that in a ultra thin, ultra light um, notebook mm -hmm. that gets a good solid seven plus hours of battery life um, is absolutely remarkable in something that's every bit as sexy as the other guys that don't run Windows, right? So, so I think that's a big evolution that will probably continue. Is that you will keep packing more power when it comes to to graphics output. But for less power consumption. Exactly. Yeah. So the whole mobile industry is actually pushing an evolution in, in the desktop world as well. Right. Because uh, you see the X51 from uh, from Alienware, for example, is a it's, it's much smaller. Also has a less big uh, power supply in it. But if you see this evolution, that means it's really good news because all the upcoming graphics cards will use less power and there will be. Uh, good option to also put in those kinds of machines so that will open up a lot of possibilities as well when it comes to uh, expanding your uh, your system without having to have such a big tower as we used to have. I mean gamers only always used to have that big huge case. Oh yeah exactly and I, I think it's evolving. To, right to a large extent people would like their PC to be about the size of a slimline PlayStation yeah. or a you know the new small Xbox 360 mm -hmm. and really only with the GeForce uh, GTX and Kepler mm -hmm. architectures can you get that much parallel perform you know parallel computing mm -hmm. performance density down into one box. Right, mm -hmm. um, but to you know, I mean, sort of also related to GeForce, of course, is what we were showing here with GeForce Grid and the whole cloud computing thing. So until GeForce Grid, mm -hmm. um, you basically had one PC in a rack, you know, with the video going out to uh, you know to the internet for remote play, whether it was with OnLive or Gaikai or anybody mm -hmm. else. Um, but now, you know, we're here showing with with Gaikai. Mm -hmm. um, more compute density and more gaming instance density than's ever than ever has been done before. So in a case where you might have been able to have maybe 10 games running in one 19-inch rack, mm -hmm. um, now you can have 40 games because we literally run four games per server, right? And you know it's the partnership of Nvidia and the um, uh, you know companies like uh, Supermicro and HP that make these rack-mounted PCs with Nvidia GeForce GPUs built into them, um, using VMware for the virtualization of everything, and it's going to completely change the notion of accessibility mm -hmm. of high-end gaming graphics because there's a lot of people out there you know so the the the, the typical video game user, mm -hmm. right, that's the hardcore and it's kind of like the top of the pyramid uh -huh. that we always talk about, they have an appreciation for what NVIDIA does. And has right. done so far. Right, yeah. and has been doing for the last 17 years. Yeah. However, 
there's a lot of people out there that unfortunately don't know better and buy PCs with Intel integrated graphics and it's it's the mainstream population they don't want to look at uh, go go online go through all the hardware specifications they just want to have something pushed into their hands exactly and they want good to go right so for them to 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 educate them mm -hmm. the whole notion of cloud gaming and oh i want to play the latest assassin's creed or i want to play the latest batman arkham asylum you know mm -hmm. uh you know series um if they can have access to it through their samsung or lg tv with a bluetooth controller attached to it right but then they say well i want to take that on the road with me though mm -hmm. when they now suddenly when they go to Best Buy or they go to um, Dixon's to buy their next computer, they'll know what to ask. They're going to want GeForce graphics in it, exactly right? So. so from our perspective, we see massive growth being enabled by this whole notion of cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. But then the other good thing is for that same user, the whole idea of being able to take the game with you, pause a game here, be able to pick it up in the place that we're going. Now I'm going to segue over to Tegra. Mm -hmm. um, you get Tegra devices that really are going to wind up being sort of oh, not too far behind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to have Kepler graphics. Yeah, I just, I just took a look at the Dead Trigger right. demo. Oh, yeah. It looks great. I mean, if like you just look at the, yeah, if you look at the screen, not your, your first reaction won't be it's a mobile game right. not at all you'll say this is a solid game it looks good it's, it's there oh yeah and I mean and, and it's because of that that um, you know our partnership here in the Uni United States with GameStop you know they're carrying Tegra tablets as legitimate gaming devices now oh, that's 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 a big stores. that's a big step for GameStop because right. that's a actually a completely Kind of a completely different product. Yes. Yeah, well, but you, 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 clo yeah, you, you close the gap. Remember, right. And yeah. you have to remember that 15 years ago, GameStop and Software Etc. and those guys yeah. used to carry PC stuff, right? But they evolved away from it, now yeah, it's going back, back to the roots. From it, and now they're going back to their roots. Um, the, the other great thing is that with these kind of games, mm -hmm. and for a company like GameStop, um, it, it is the plug and play kind of experience. Right, and I think what you're going to see within the mobile space very soon is you'll see gift cards start happening, and um, and it, it'll leave everything open for GameStop to be able to be very profitable, doing gift cards at store, tied into their Power Up Game Rewards program, and, and things like that. So, so we see this holiday season being a complete upheaval of everything that you know about gaming. And, and a, a yeah, and a reset of if you want mobile, you've got Tegra, uh -huh. right? If you if you want high end or even a thousand dollar to fifteen hundred dollar ultra book, uh -huh. you've got GeForce Kepler and you know GTX graphics in exactly. thin and light notebooks. You've got the big iron kind of you know GeForce gaming and your your big PCs. Although the nice part about it is they're not such a big PC anymore, and they don't exactly. have to be it's shrinking as well thanks right. to the whole mobile uh, technology. Yep, and then kind of right in the middle for everybody else, you've got GeForce yep. Grid Cloud Gaming. Okay, cool. Well, I think that gives us a really good idea of what's going on. So you really broaden the whole range of, of, of products as well so I think we have a, a cycle that still starts at the what you're used to doing right. so at the, the desktop gaming machines and then the gap is being closed between the whole mobile and and, and desktop uh, evolution and then I think one is following very closely after after the other right now right. so you got really big top models coming into desktop which then flow into the the whole mobile uh, section as well, yeah. and I, I mean, think that's a really nice is, evolution. Yeah, yeah, it is all about allowing users to consume content any which way they want, you know, and it's delivering for consumers and experiencing in the best way as possible. Precisely. Good. Good well, thanks for the uh, for the interview, and right, looking really forward to seeing all these uh, games and products. Very good. Thank you. Thanks.